live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. There have been quite a few ballots submitted for the AP Top 25 that make you scratch your head, make you wonder if the voter even watched the games, and make you wonder if the person even knows anything about college football. Some of the ballots submitted are just insultingly bad with regards to the placement of a particular team. Last week, Leah Van had Kansas State ranked at number 6, above TCU at number 7, even though TCU was undefeated and beat Kansas State. That same week, Mike Berardino had Alabama ranked at number 3 and Tennessee at number 5, even though Tennessee was undefeated and beat Alabama. And that same week, Don Williams did not rank North Carolina, despite the fact that UNC was 7-1 and was undefeated in conference play. You get the idea. There are always going to be highly questionable ballots when it comes to the AP poll, and that's just part of the game, and quite honestly, the fun and chaotic nature of it all. But while people make mistakes and might make questionable decisions that you don't agree with, imagine throwing together a ballot so bad and so hastily made that his vote got taken away from him in the middle of the season. Because in 2006, thanks to a controversy involving this team right here, the Oklahoma Sooners, that's exactly what happened to writer Jim Kleinpeter. Kleinpeter graduated from the LSU School of Journalism and has been a sports writer for the last 38 years for the Times-Picayune, having been with the paper since 1984, and having been the beat writer for the LSU Tigers since 1995. When you've been with the same company writing stories for close to 40 years now, you're clearly doing something right, and know at least to some extent what you're doing and what you're talking about. But man, this was not his finest moment. Not by a long shot. Because in 2006, Jim Kleinpeter submitted a ballot with such an egregious mistake that the AP took his vote away. And this is the story behind the absolute disaster at the polls. Before I talk about the actual ballot and the absolute catastrophe, we need some context to understand the team involved and how their game was going. It's November 11, 2006, and we have an absolutely big game of the Big 12 on our hands over in Norman, between the Oklahoma Sooners and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. For Oklahoma, after a somewhat disappointing 2005 season under Bob Stoops, where they went 8-4, finishing with their worst record and their lowest final ranking in the AP poll since 1999, this year feels like a big-time bounce back. Entering this game against the Red Raiders, Oklahoma had been inside the top 25 all season, and entered this game with a 7-2 record overall, a 4-1 record in conference play, and a number 17 ranking. Thanks to a great defense and a great offense, both of which ranked inside the top 20 in the nation, this felt like a return to form. There was a ton of great talent on that team, from wide receiver Malcolm Kelly, who finished the year 3rd in receiving yards, 4th in receptions, and 5th in receiving touchdowns in the Big 12 Conference, to running back Adrian Peterson, who was looking like the favorite to win the Heisman before he got hurt midway through the year, to linebacker Rufus Alexander, who won the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, to so many others. And now, they have this game against a 6-4 Texas Tech team that beat the Sooners last year. This was a must-win game for Oklahoma if they wanted to have any shot at winning the Big 12. It was going to take a lot for it to happen, as they needed to win out, and have Texas lose to both an unranked Kansas State team and an unranked Texas A&M team. But if that happened, then Oklahoma would be moving on to the Big 12 championship game as the winners of the South Division. But this game was a must-win. Win this one in front of your home fans, and you've still got a shot to win the division, win the conference, and make it to a BCS game. Lose this one, and all of that goes away. However, with two minutes left in the first half, things were looking absolutely bleak for the Sooners. After jumping out to a 10-7 lead, it seemed like for the Sooners, the wheels were starting to fall off, as the Red Raiders scored 17 consecutive points to make it a 24-10 game. The second quarter might have been the sloppiest quarter of Oklahoma football all season. Texas Tech got the ball down 10-7 and drove from their own 22-yard line to the red zone in three plays before kicking a field goal to tie it at 10 apiece. Then, 
Manuel Johnson returned the ensuing kickoff for the Sooners, and he fumbled it, with Jonathan Hollins recovering it for Texas Tech in the red zone. This resulted in a six-yard touchdown pass by Grant Harrell to Robert Johnson to give Texas Tech a 17-10 lead. And then, a few minutes later, Paul Thompson tried to pass down the sideline, which was intercepted by Antonio Huffman and returns to the house for a pick six touchdown. When you're floating a pass like that on a route where the quarter can jump it easily, you know exactly what's going to happen. Oklahoma was playing an incredibly sloppy game, and they were in serious danger of losing for the second straight season, and for just the second time ever at home, as they had won four straight against Texas Tech there, not having lost to Norman since 1996, and winning all four of those games by multiple possessions. The Sooners already had three turnovers, with two fumbles and an interception. They were not finding any holes to run through, and they were having some difficulty, as most teams in the country did, stopping Graham Harrell at quarterback. It was a horrible start to the game, and in the end, it was a bad omen for what was to come, as Oklahoma lost that game by that same scoreline of 24-14. And one writer was not impressed by this at all, because Jim Kleinpeter, seeing how bad Oklahoma played and seeing that they dropped the game on their home field, losing their third game of the season, decided that he was going to drop the Sooners down in the AP poll, as you see voters routinely do after a team loses a game. Oklahoma was ranked 18th in the AP poll, and on Klein Peters' ballot entering the game, he had the Sooners ranked at number 15, so right in line with everyone else. But after this embarrassing performance full of mistakes that ended in defeat to an unranked team, he dropped Oklahoma all the way down to number 24. The Sooners dropped nine spots in Klein Peters' poll. And just like that, it seemed as though their odds of making it to a BCS game were all but shot. However, there was just one small problem with Klein Peters' ballot that we need to talk about. There's just one teeny tiny problem that feels like it's worth mentioning. I mean, it, it's not a huge deal, it's really just a technicality. It's just a minor nitpick that I'm sure won't make people question whether this voter actually knows what he's doing or what he's talking about. I might be making a mountain out of a molehill here, but I feel like we need to address this. Because, oh yeah, OKLAHOMA WON! That's right, OKLAHOMA WON THE FREAKING GAME! Everything that I've said for the last 90 or so seconds about how OKLAHOMA lost the game, that was a complete lie. Because after falling behind 24-10, OKLAHOMA turned on the Jets and scored the final 24 points of the game to win it 34-24. Combine that with the shocking loss that Texas had to Kansas State, and Oklahoma was now right in the thick of things for the South Division title in the conference. Bad pick aside, Paul Thompson had a good game, going 24 for 31, completing over 77% of his passes for 309 yards and two touchdowns, with the 309 yards being a career high for him, and with this being the highest completion percentage in any game that he ever started. Malcolm Kelly, who is having a great year at receiver already, followed it up with 11 receptions for 153 yards and a touchdown, with 153 yards being a career high for him in a conference game, and the 11 receptions being a career high across all competitions. The defense for the Sooners played lights out after a somewhat shaky start, as the Red Raiders did not score any points on their final six drives of the game. And even though the run game wasn't all that explosive or effective in the first half, Chris Brown turned on the Jets in the second half, as he finished the game with two rushing touchdowns, including a 41-yarder to give Oklahoma the lead that they would never relinquish. In the end, following a rough start, Oklahoma showed why they were one of the best teams in the nation, and took care of business against their conference rivals, winning it by double digits. But Jim Kleinpeter was filling out his ballot, and dropped Oklahoma 9 spots from number 15 to number 24, because he thought that Oklahoma lost the game. Now look, People make mistakes on these ballots all the time. People will forget teams, or they'll fill out two ballots in case of contingencies and then accidentally send the wrong one, or they'll forget to put state next to some team's name on accident, meaning that an entirely different team that they didn't mean to give votes to gets votes. The AP completely recognizes that. Heck, the week after, Kirk Herbstreit of ESPN left a 9-in-1 Rutgers team off of his ballot, and after seeing everyone else's ballots, realized that he somehow forgot Rutgers, and immediately called up the AP to try and rectify the situation. Nothing happened to him, because again, 
the AP recognizes that these guys are humans, and accidents happen. But those are done out of pure accident. This one was not an accident. This was just a guy being incredibly lazy and incompetent at his job. Because when Klein Peter was asked about why he dropped Oklahoma, he said that he couldn't find the score to the game. Seriously. Klein Peter was in the press box for the Alabama LSU game, doing his job as LSU's beat writer. And he said, I was asking people about different teams, thinking about the poll the next day. I thought somebody told me that Oklahoma was losing to Texas Tech at some point. And I asked after the LSU game was over, did Oklahoma win? Somebody said Oklahoma lost. I usually rely on the morning paper here in Baton Rouge. And for some reason, they didn't have the score. I looked all through it. I'm sorry, what? You couldn't find the score? Again, the year is 2006. This is not the 1950s or the 1960s. This is 2006. You have a computer. You have the internet. There's this little known website that you may have heard of called ESPN.com that has the scores to the games. Here, I'll show you what it looked like back in 2006 thanks to the Wayback Machine. All you have to do is go to college, go to football, and click scoreboard. That's it. Then, it directs you to the scores of literally every single game, which looked like this the day before the game. And oh, would you look at that! Texas Tech against Oklahoma. Wow, so hard to find. If that was too complicated, then there's this under-the-radar search engine called Google, where you can look up who won the game. You also have a TV and you can see if you watch ESPN for five minutes what the score of the Oklahoma game was on the bottom line. You're telling me that not only do you admit to not watching the games of other teams, but you're relying on the newspaper to get your scores, which is fine, but if they don't have the score, that you just throw your hands up in the air as if there's nothing you can do about it? Plus, because of how late games on the West Coast run, you're going to have quite a few games that won't have their scores posted in the Sunday paper because they won't be able to print in time. What do you do about that? Just blindly guess as to who you think won the game? When AP voters make mistakes, usually it's like going to the grocery store thinking that you need to buy milk, and then you accidentally forget to buy it. With this, it's like Klein Peter went to the grocery store, wrote down that he needed milk, then searched the fruit aisle for milk, never looked up at the sign directly above him that indicated where the milk was, and then left the store. The good news was that even with Klein Peter's mishap, Oklahoma's ranking was not impacted in the slightest bit. Overall, the Sooners moved up from number 17 to number 16 following their win against Texas Tech. The bad news for Klein Peter, however, was that this mistake was so bad and was so careless that the AP took away his vote. As Terry Taylor, the sports director for the Associated Press, said on the matter, we understand mistakes can happen, but we thought this one could have been prevented. The heart of the matter here is the credibility of the poll. I mean, I'm not sure this mistake could have been prevented, Terry. It's a lot to ask a college football voter to take time out of their day to go to ESPN.com and look at the scores. This isn't what they signed up for. I mean, where do we draw the line? For what it's worth, to this day, Klein Peter has never submitted another AP vote again. His membership in the poll was terminated for good. So if any writers who have a vote in the AP poll are watching this, first off, I'm insanely jealous of you because I would like to have a vote. However, if you want a lesson to take away from this, it's quite simple. Know the scores. Know what team won and lost a game before you vote on them in your poll. And if you don't know, then literally just Google it. It's really not that hard. In other words, Look at what Jim Kleinbeater did in 2006. And then, do literally the exact opposite. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.